Hey, good evening. It's Monday, April 1st, and welcome back to Everyday Talks 24-7. It's the day after Easter. And it is so important that we don't lose the hope and the reality of the resurrection. Everything that Easter represents. The resurrection is the good news. That's our hope. I've entitled the video tonight, God gives us the good news first. God gives us the good news first. You know, you've heard the phrase people say, well, do you want the good news or the bad news? People will often say, well, give me the bad news and then encourage me with the good news. But God's way of doing things is exactly the opposite. He gives us the good news first. I've got a story I want to be able to tell you tonight. Fourteen years ago on April 1st, Ruth got a call from uh, our neurologist. She had an MRI the day before. We weren't sure exactly what her problems were. She's having some symptoms. And the neurologist said, call your husband, and I want the two of you to come in this morning. So we were both headed in different directions, but we changed and headed back to the, uh, the doctor's office. So when we got there, he looked us right in the eye and had an image of her brain scan up on the screen. He said, I have some bad news. And what he proceeded to do was to tell us about this rather large brain tumor in the back left half of Ruth's brain. And that was the bad news. The prognosis at that point was four to seven months. In God's providence, we wound up going to, going to Duke University. Um, this beautiful connection that God made there with Ruth's niece and just... But the point was, we had gotten bad news, but the good news was first. The good news was that Jesus is on the throne, that he is in control, that he is our Lord, and we have hope that God is right there with us. And that's how Ruth responded. She responded better than I did. But she knew God was faithful would keep his word. And so she responded that God was being faithful to her and to her family, even in the middle of this very serious diagnosis. She was diagnosed with glioblastoma, multiform, which is the most lethal form of brain cancer. And through God's providence and purpose, Ruth lived another three and a half years, not four to seven months, where she continued to be faithful to God, to continue to live on the fact that the good news God has given her is what helped her understand and put into focus the bad news. And that's what we all need. We need to focus on the good news to give us perspective on the hard things in life that we face. There's a passage in Lamentations which very much typifies the way that Ruth responded and why she responded the way she did. Lamentations is a book written right after Babylonian, the Babylonians had conquered Judah, sacked the city, carried off its people. The things were dark indeed, bad news. But the good news was that God was a faithful covenant God. So in the midst of being defeated and trampled because of the disobedience to God, there's still hope. And Lamentations has that. But that's the context where it's written. Let me read verses 19 through 24. Rem remember my affliction and my homelessness. This is the people, but the people of God, they have been driven out of their home. Remember my affliction and my homelessness, the wormwood and the gall. Surely my soul remembers and is bowed down within me. 
this I will return to my heart. Therefore, I wait and hope. The writer of Lamentations says we have hope. And then the verses about which you're very familiar with. The loving kindnesses of Yahweh indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Yahweh, you, Lord, Yahweh is my portion forever, says my soul. Therefore, I will wait for him. Each of these three verse segments end with the idea, I will wait and hope, and then it says, I will wait for him. And that's what Ruth did. She believed the good news of the resurrection, of the hope that Christ brings for everyone, for his people. That is the hope that she hung on to. So she took this bad news through the lens of the good news that we have, that we are with Christ. That he knows where we are now, he brings us on into eternity. But she lived this life, a little bit of heaven, right here on earth, because she remembered and was faithful to the promises of God. When you're facing hard things, maybe the sun setting is setting on you, you feel that way. Remember, God gives us the good news first. We are made whole and complete in Christ. Our sins are forgiven. He is working everything together for his glory and our good. And that's the way that Ruth lived. I've told you before, during the three and a half years that she lived, she never once said, why me? Never once complained to God. Never once. She only wanted to make the time that she had left count for the glory of God, for the kingdom of God. You see, <laughs> she remembered that God gives the good news first. And that's the hope that we have. Be encouraged about these things. God gives good news first. He gives us the good news first. And that's how we view the challenges of this life. That's how we have hope. That's how we wait in certainty for God's faithfulness. Very personal day for me and my family this day, April 1st. It's a, a day that God showed to us that he gives us the good news first. And that's the thought for this night. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. You have a great evening. Thank you for watching. May God richly bless you as you seek to live for his glory.